chapter 2, verses 75, 79. This is what he misquoted. Look, can you, O man of faith, entertain the hope that they will believe in you? Now notice again what he ignores. Seeing that a party of them heard the word of God. Did you catch it again? A party, not all of them. See, the Quran doesn't say all of them. Certain group at a certain time. Pay attention. Because that's what he did with 378. A party of them, all of a sudden that means wholesale corruption. A party, not all of them, heard the word of God and perverted it knowingly after they understood it. Now, did you catch this is honesty? You see how he lied to Jay about 275? Because notice it says they perverted the word they heard. How then do you assume this means they perverted the text because you don't hear the text, you read the text if you're perverting the text. Here it means when they heard the word of God, then they perverted its meaning because when they heard it, then they twisted it and misinterpreted it. See the deception again? But then he thinks 279 proves this case. So let's see if you're paying attention. Number one, it's only a party, not all, a specific group at a specific time. Number two, they're perverting what they hear, not what they read. So they're not corrupting the text. They're perverting the words they hear by adding or twisting them. Did you catch those two facts? Did you catch those two facts? Are you with me there? You see what he did again? It's a specific group, not all, not all Jews, not all Christians, in all places, at all times. A specific group at a specific time, not all. Number two, they are perverting what they hear, not what they read. So it has nothing to do with them changing the text. It has to do with them hearing the words orally and then adding or perverting their meaning verbally. See the dishonesty again? But then he thinks he has us in verse 27, the verse 79. Let's continue. All right. Behold, when they meet the men of faith, they say, we believe. But when they meet each other in private, they say, shall you tell them what God hath revealed to you? That they may engage you in argument about it in their own desires. In other words, why are you telling what God revealed? Keep it to yourself so they don't use it against you. So they're withholding and hiding the revelation. How do you hold and hide a revelation you don't have? Do you understand what it's saying? They're saying, why are you telling them the revelation given to you? Hide it. Well, you can't hide something you don't have. See, notice it's saying... When they meet each other in private, it's not about a group of Jews, by the way. They say, hey, why are you telling them what was revealed to us by God? In other words, what they're being condemned for is hiding what they have. Well, you can't hide what you don't have, folks. Basic logic. If they're hiding the revelation, that means they have the revelation. Otherwise, what are they hiding? Is that sinking in? Is that sinking in before I move on? Here it is. But when they meet each other in private, they, shall, they say, shall you tell them what God had revealed to you, that he may engage you in argument about it, right, before in their own desires? Do we got it? Sink in? But now here's where he thinks he got me. Here's where he thinks he got us. And they do nothing but conjecture. Now watch, then woe to those, right? I'm sorry, I skipped a part, or this skipped it for me, sorry. Okay, here, this is the part. I, I One more time. Shall you tell them what God has revealed to you, that they may engage in argument about it before your Lord? Do you not understand their aim? Now watch. Know they not that God knoweth what they conceal, what they reveal? Okay. How does... This passage proved that they corrupted the text when it says they're concealing what God revealed to them and they only make known parts of what God revealed to them. You cannot hide and conceal what you don't have. The only way they can conceal God's revelation is if they have it. So they're being condemned for hiding what they have. Okay, but now let's continue. Know they not that God knoweth what they conceal and what they reveal? Now here's the key. There are among them, notice again, among them, not all of them, a party of them, among them, not everyone. Illiterates who know not the book, 
They don't know the book. They're a letter. They've never read the book. But see therein their own desires. Now, here's the part where he thinks catches us. And they do nothing but conjecture. Then woe to those who write the book with their own hands. And they say, this is from God. To traffic with it for miserable price. Woe to them for what their hands do write and for the gain they make thereby. Aha, see? The Quran says they wrote scriptures that's not from God to make money. Okay, now let's destroy this objection, shall we? Did you notice who the ones were who wrote a book with their hands? Here it is, 278 to 279. Look at his dishonesty again. Okay, look at his dishonesty. Let's see if you catch it. 278 to 279. Okay. Pay attention because this is the best he had. That's all he had because he didn't have anything else. Let's see who it is that wrote a book with their hands in order to deceive people to make money off of them. And there are among them illiterates who know not the book. Illiterate means they don't know the book. They haven't read it. They don't have access to it. So how do you corrupt a book you don't know? How do you change the text of the book that you haven't read and are ignorant of? No, because you misunderstood. It's not illiterate meaning unlearned, uneducated, meaning they're illiterate when it comes to what's in the book. They're not illiterate. They're only illiterate when it comes to the book, meaning they don't know what's in the book because they don't have access to it. They don't read it. So the word ummi literally means unlettered, someone uneducated about the scripture. That's where you're getting confused. Okay? It explained what it means, illiterate. Ummiyun means uneducated, unlettered, not illiterate that you can't read. So why were they illiterate? Meaning they were ignorant and unstudied when it came to the book. They didn't have access to the book. They didn't know what was in the book. They didn't read it. So what did they do? Then they wrote a book of their own and then deceive people thinking this book is God's word to then make money off of them. So this actually is not about the corruption of the book sent by God. It's about a group of people at a specific time in a specific location who knew nothing about the book, who didn't have access to the book, didn't know it was in the book, who then wrote something and claimed it's revelation to see people. Who? A particular group at a particular time. Not all of them, not everyone. And this group had no access to the book that was preserved, so they couldn't change it. In other words, this passage makes more sense that it's referring to the book of fables like the Talmud and other books that people had written that they then cited as scripture, not the books of the Bible. So number one, it's referring to a specific group at a specific time. Number two, this group were uneducated when it came to what was in the book. Well, if they don't know what's in the book, they can't change it. So then they wrote their own book, which could be like the Talmud. So this passage doesn't show that they corrupted the Bible wholesale. At best, it only refers to one particular group in one particular area. So even if you want to say it's the Bible, all this means is they corrupted their copies. But there were other groups all over the world who had their own copies that they would not corrupt. That's what chapter 3, verse 113, 114 stated, and chapter 3, verse 199. You see how dishonest this guy is? And when I go into part two and then make the positive case and show you verse after verse after verse where the Quran says, Muhammad and his Quran confirm what you have, confirm what's in your possession, confirm the scriptures and the hadith, you're going to see what kind of wicked deceiver this guy is. Dishonest. Because remember, the kind of God you serve will impact the kind of person you'll be. And his God is a liar and deceiver. De Liar and deceiver and a murderer and a rapist. Cool. Let me call hell and ask Muhammad who the group was. What's it to you who the group was? It was your ancestors in Turkey. All you need to care about, it's a particular group at a particular time and not everyone. So the Muslim sources will tell you it was a group of Jews. Right? But... Who cares whether you know the exact group or not? The context is clear. It's a particular group at a particular time who twisted what they heard and another group at a particular time 
who didn't know what was in the Bible. So they wrote a book on their own. That's all you need to know. Cool. You want me to call hell and ask Muhammad? Because that's where he is. I don't have a direct line to hell. But I'll try to find one. And to prove to you that the Quran agrees, there were other groups that would not corrupt the Bible and twist its meanings because they feared God and recited the verses correctly and would not sell them for a gain. Let me reread those verses again. Here it is, what you read earlier. One more time, I'm going to read it from Yusuf Ali. You remember, we just read this earlier for 378. Here you go. And I'm going to end it with 444 to 47. You ready? Here it is. Chapter 3, verses 113 and 114. Chapter 3, verses 113 and 114. Not all of them are alike. Did you catch that cool? Not all of them are alike. There's one group that are corrupt and evil that will pervert the words with their tongue and write a book claiming it's from God, but they don't know what the true book says, so they can't corrupt that. But there are other groups who are not like them. Not all of them are alike. Of the people of the book are a portion that stand for the night. So they pray at night. They rehearse the signs, meaning the verses of God, all night long. Well, how do you re re recite the verses of God if you don't have uncorrupt copies that contain the original verses of God? I read this in the beginning, Andre. Were you listening? They rehearse the signs of God all night long. And they prostrate themselves in adoration. They believe in God and the last day. They enjoy what is right and forbid what is wrong. And they hasten <clears throat> in emulation and all good works. They are in the ranks of the righteous. Now, chapter 3, verse 199. I hope you're paying attention because I quoted these earlier, Andre. You guys better pay attention and learn so you don't misinform and get embarrassed. Chapter 3, verse 199. Okay, brother, then that's okay. Chapter 3, verse 100, 199. Notice, they're not all alike. Chapter 3, verse 199, Yusuf Ali. And there are certainly among the people of the book those who believe in God in the relation to you and in relation to them, bowing in humility to God. Now watch. They will not sell the signs of God for a miserable gain. Unlike that group in chapter 2, verse 78, 79, that group wrote a book and sold it for money. Here it says there's another group of Jews and Christians who will not do that. For them is a reward with their Lord, and God is swift in account. Now let me give you his burial. Because he forgot to tell you that the Quran says there were Jews who heard the words of Muhammad and perverted those words. Perverted those words. Now if we follow his logic, because this, he misquoted chapter 2 verse 75, and 378, which says they perverted the words that they heard. And one says they twist the book with their tongues, which he took to mean they changed the scripture. Well, he just proved the Jews perverted the Quran, twisted the Quran, and changed the Quran. Why? Look what it says. Chapter 4, verses 44 to 47. Watch here. Look what the Jews did. Look what the Jews did to Muhammad's revelation. Chapter 4. Verse 44 to 47. Okay? And we're going to wrap it up. See how that works? How easy it is to destroy their lives? So watch here. Let me get it for you. All right. Here you go. Hast thou not turned thy vision to those who are given a portion of the book? In the context, it's the Jews. They're given a portion of the book. They traffic in error, in error and wish that ye should lose the right path. But God hath full knowledge of your enemies. Now watch. God is enough for a protector and God is enough for a helper. The, the Jews there are those who displace words from the right places. You catch it? The Jews would displace words from the right places. But whose words? <clears throat> Muhammad's words. <clears throat> and say, we hear and we disobey. When Muhammad would say, hear and obey, they would test the words, his Arabic words, we hear and disobey. And when Muhammad would say, hear what is heard, they would say, we hear what is not heard. And Reina, with the twist of their tongues and a slander to faith. 
If only they had said what we hear and we obey and do hear and do look at us, <clears throat> it would have been better for them and more proper, right? But God hath cursed them for their unbelief, but few of them will believe. Now, did you catch it? The Quran says the Jews were doing to Muhammad's words what some of them did to the meaning of the Bible. Muhammad would say X, they would twist it to say I. Muhammad would say to them, hear and obey. They would say, we hear and disobey. Muhammad would say, hear and be heard. They would say, we hear and we do not you know, want you to be heard. So they twisted the words of Muhammad with their tongues. If we follow the logic of Daniel, the fact that they twisted Muhammad's words with their tongues means they corrupted the Quran, destroyed the Quran because they twisted the words of Muhammad with their tongues. You see how stupid that is? Because now watch what verse 47 says. I quoted chapter 4, verses 44 to 46, but now watch chapter 4, verse 47. Chapter 4, verse 47. Now watch this, guys. In the same context where the Jews are accused of twisting Muhammad's words with their tongues, giving it a false meaning, the same context, chapter 4, verse 47. O ye people of the book, believe in what we have now revealed, confirming what is already with you. This is the burial of Daniel Hakikachu. What does the Quran do? Confirm what you have at that time <clears throat> during Muhammad's lifetime. Wait, the Quran confirms and the verb sadaqah means to bear witness to, to testify to its authenticity and accuracy and integrity. Muhammad's Quran confirms the veracity, authenticity of what you have. Well, the only thing they had was the books of the Bible. So believe in the Quran because it confirms what you have to be the truth.